Hey folks, Todd Shelnut here with CFI Pro again this week, and we have the first of many great installments this week based off of systems. And systems is just one of those things So when people take check rides or when people go before the FA or DPE or they're talking before their instructor, they really fall short a lot. And um, I guess it's because they simply just haven't figured out the easiest way to try to explain it. So what I'm going to do today is make sure that you actually truly understand what goes on behind the scenes, meaning that when you touch that lever or you touch that switch or you touch something in the airplane, what happens when you do that? And that's what we're going to talk about throughout the systems on the CFI Pro video series. So without further ado, let's get started. So again, today we're going to be talking about the landing gear system of the Piper Seminole. So as you know, the basic operation of this system is where you actually take the lever and let's just say I'm going down the runway and I get ready to rotate and to climb out from the runway environment. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I'm at a safe altitude and that's on a normal takeoff. We're not going to get into uh, takeoffs, different type of takeoffs here on this video. So it's normal takeoff. So I'm at a safe altitude, no runway in environment left, no runway left. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the gear into the up position. So what actually happens when you move that gear lever into the up or down position? Well, let's talk about it. That gear lever is actually tied into this device. And this device right here is actually known as a solenoid or contact right there, another, another word. And what happens is this is just merely a switch. So you have to have the electricity going from one side to the other side. Like for instance, uh, you would tie one of these wires into this side that goes to the gear pump and then this side would be tied into the electrical bus carrying the energy to the contactor but it can't go all the way through the other side unless something's telling it to close the circuit and uh, what we have here is uh, two wires connected to this some solenoids just only have one wire connected to it this one has two so it has two different functions so this wire is connected to the gear handle so when you push the gear pull the gear lever handle up it, it uh, tells this wire to open up the circuit to allow the energy to come through and uh, therefore the, uh, the energy comes through and, and uh, tells the pump to shut on, right? And we'll talk about what this other wire does in, in a minute. It, taught, it uh, tied into something else. So this is called the solenoid or the contactor. So we go from the pump handle, uh, excuse me, from the gear switch to the solenoid and now we're at the pump. So what happens at the pump? Well, as you can see here, uh, this is also called a hydraulic power pack or whatever. It has three distinct colored wires on it, blue, green, and black, where the green and the blue are the power cables and the black is the, uh, goes to earth ground um, or is tied into the earth ground. And so let's look at this pump here. It's a very, uh, very, yeah, kind of medium, medium size kind of uh, thing, object, and it's mounted in the back portion of the Seminole behind the cargo uh, door, at, behind the cargo partition. And uh, the really biggest thing on this one, I think that most people misunderstand, is when they actually start to talk about this piece on the bottom here, and specifically this is really want to talk about, up until here you have a pump and a reservoir, and then you have this piece here. This is the piece we're going to talk about here because it's the most misunderstood. So I actually have had uh, another piece actually taken off another pump so that you can actually see a little bit clearer what this piece does. So if you look online and you look at some of the training material that's on this particular piece, what you're going to see is a person has drawn out maybe a, a rectangular box and it has like things that slide back and forth and they talk about a high and a low pressure side. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why that's not correct and why this is uh, to see, actually see the true part is much more correct. So as you can see on this, it only has uh, two ways that fluid could enter and exit, which is uh, one through here and one through here. So the hydraulic lines would enter to, would be connected here to take it to the system. So I think the most important part of the system is actually this piece here. This is a very, very important piece. As you can see here, this is just a little blue plug, and I'm going to go ahead, and I've already loosened it here. I'm going to take that blue plug out, and uh, inside of that, I actually have uh, 
the very first thing I have is a spring. So there's a spring on the other side of the plug, and then the next thing is, and of course I have to knock it a little bit here, maybe a little bit more than normal. Oh, there it is. That thing. And this is what is more commonly referred, let me give you, see if I can give you some back in there that works out. So this is your shuttle valve. Very tiny. I know some of you are probably looking at this, you know, looking at this video, going, "That's the shuttle valve, Todd." I'm going, "Yeah, that's the shuttle valve. It's not like this long and, you know, big square thing. This is the shuttle valve, and it only slides in an area that wide. So it only goes from, uh, from there to there like this. That's it. And it's very simplistic. So if you look at the shuttle valve here, uh, I'm going to put it uh, right there at the tip of my finger. Uh, as it slides back and forth, you can see that it's only connected in this uh, circuit here, this uh, hydraulic line. And the reason for it is because the fluid actually enters this device here from the back side. You can see here there's a mounting bolt hole for this to mount to the bottom of the uh, power pack. But then you see these two small holes right there. Those two small holes is actually where the fluid gets pumped into this assembly. And so as the fluid pumps in, it pushes this device over to the side and allows the fluid to pump through this here. So if I'm trying to actually pump fluid back in, this will actually not allow that to, to happen. Okay, it's like a one-way valve kind of thing. So that is your sliding uh, shuttle and shuttle valve, and it just slides back and forth in that, in that assembly. Uh, depending on the flow of hydraulic fluid. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and drop that back in. If there's any questions on this at all, if you're really not sure uh, exactly what I'm talking about, please make sure you post the comments down below so that way I can better assist you in answering the questions with it. But um, anyway, this is that device that a lot of people draw rectangular. As you can see, it's not rectangular. It doesn't work anything. Well, I say I say it doesn't work anything re remotely close to, but you can see how small it is. It's a very small device. All right, so uh, we went from the pump handle to the solenoid contactor to the power pack. It's the bottom of the power pack. And now it's going to exit the power pack. Where does it go now? Well, it actually goes through this device. So this device would connect to the, the device that and so it looks more like that because that's the outflow. And so it goes through here, and what you see here is a little small device on here, and it has some electrical wires on it. So remember on the contactor a minute ago, I told you I was going to talk to you about this other wire that's connected to it, which also tells the contactor when to open up and allow the, the energy to flow through, the electric, electrical energy to flow through. Well, it's this device. So this is a, a, just a pressure switch. And so as you're flying along in the Seminole, if for some reason the pressure in the gear system falls below 1,500 PSI, uh, so the high end is 1,800, the low end is 1,500, falls below 1,500 PSI, this pressure sensor senses it and sends a signal over to the contactor telling it to cut on, and the hydraulic power pack will cut on until the gear pressure gets back up to 18 PSI, 1,800 PSI, or until one of the micro switches have been cut by the gear. So this is called the pressure switch. After the pressure switch, it simply just goes to each one of the actuators. Now, when you get to one of the actuators, it kind of works off the same principle as like a syringe would work. So if you are uh, seeing the syringe that a doctor may usually give you a shot, you know, it contains, uh, when they draw medicine into it, it's a cylinder with a plunger. And so I can actually squeeze down on the plunger and pump the fluid out, uh, or I could pull it, uh, pull it on the plunger and pull the liquid in. So either way, I'm displacing fluid within the plunger. So if I send fluid to the hydraulic actuator, I'm filling it up on just one end of that uh, actuator that moves up and down with inside of the big long cylinder. Uh, if I put it in from the top of the cylinder, it pushes the actuator down, extends the gear. If I put the fluid in from the bottom of the cylinder, which would be what happened if I reverse the pump, 
I'm going to put fluid in from the bottom of the cylinder, and it pushes it up and retracts the gear. So that's how the gear system works. Now, if it's up or down, it'll hit a set of micro switches and tell you, the pilot, the operator, that you have either your gears up or your gears down or your gears unsafe, which means that the gears are slammed. Uh, one of the other pieces of the gear system, which not a lot of people see, is this particular piece here. And I'll kind of get you to see that little piece there. And it has this uh, articulating handle that goes up like this. All right, so what happens is, uh, on this particular piece here, uh, it is mounted in the aircraft uh, in this floorboard area. And it has the all the hydraulic lines out coming from the low end or the high end to each side of it here. And this is your emergency extension valve. So if I want to drop the gear manually, I would pull the handle, and the handle would articulate the lever over, and it would just simply neutralize the high and low pressures, allowing the fluid to flow freely through the system, and the gear would just fall manually to gravity. Okay, So that's how that works there. That's how a manual extension valve works. And you can see there, it's kind of it's like a little, little space shuttle shielded. Anyway, but uh, that's how that works right there. So um, other than that, the, uh, there, of course, you have your micro switches, which is going to be covered with our uh, video in which we're going to shoot here in a few days, which is going to be on the swing test. So be looking for the video called the Piper Seminole Gear Swing Test, and you'll actually see exactly what the mechanics are looking at when they're testing the gear. Now remember that when you're going to talk about this system as a student, if you know about the intricate parts, it's a little bit easier to talk about it. And as an instructor, you should make sure that all of your students know the system in this amount of detail. And the easiest way to do it is to actually go show them the system in the airplane. Probably one of the biggest problems I've had as an examiner and from an instructor standpoint is working uh, with students who were working with other instructors before and they say, they say to me, I've never seen that, or my instructor's never showed me that. And I'm going like, ah, how can your instructor have never have shown you that? You've got to have hands-on experience with this stuff. It's called the law of effect, uh, and it's really just a great thing, you know, to have that positive experience that you have with your instructor, that you walking them with them and showing them exactly what needs to be done. So that way the person has more meaning to the items in which they're looking at. So just tell them about the gear system sometimes may not be enough. So that's all I have today for the gear system. Be looking for our gear swing video series, which is actually going to show very detail about the underneath the gear, underneath the aircraft. You're going to see pictures of micro switches. You're going to see pictures of J-hooks. You're going to see pictures of hydraulic actuators. It's just going to be a really great video, plus the swing test, and uh, you'll actually get to see a manual drop as well as some other great video series on the way. I'm Ty Shona for CFI Pro, and just remember, it's not hard if you have a great instructor.